how we doing kids okay so I've taken a little break from all my other videoing and I decided I'm gonna throw together a bunch of TI inspire graphing CX graphing calculator support tips I think at the end uh, no uh, so all I'm gonna do is show you a few this first one is gonna be on absolute value now if at any time by the way all of these videos can be found at www nkinfinity.com now if you're getting there right after I started making them there may not be as many there available for you but at some point there's probably going to be 30 or 40 videos short little tutorial videos so if you need to know how to do something on the TI Inspire take a look there if you don't see it if it's not there shoot me a memo and I will get it done and I'll get it up on the internet for you and I will thank you I will appreciate it because if there's something you need to know how to do on the calculator I want to help you so today's first video is going to be on absolute values so that's all we're going to talk about you should know that the absolute value function looks like this how do you graph it on the calculator what is it going to look like I'm going to go through about 10 different functions we'll talk about their transformations as a little math lesson as well but why not see what these look like on the calculator so I'll get to the calculator I'll go into graph mode and I'm just gonna graph them now how do you find an absolute value function well right here above the times button you see where my yellow pointer is right here there's the times button right above the times button you're gonna find almost everything you need St these two buttons are gonna be almost everything you need in order to find between these two in the menu they're gonna get all worn out okay so those are the buttons you're mostly gonna use in this case we're going to click on this and you see fraction you see exponent roots all exponential functions log functions these are things a lot of these are things you can find right directly on the screen or you can click on here and get here matrices systems of equations so on and so forth but absolute value is right there it's the first second one second row first one you just click on it and I click on it and I say okay oops I didn't I didn't quite click on it I guess click on it click on, enter ah uh, all right now we're going now we're ready now we're ready enter okay so there it is absolute value and I just I punch in an X that's it that's all there is to it now as I go through these I can change this by the way to get to a second graph if you want to put a second graph on it you just press tab see how it says F2 so what if I want to put this one on absolute value of X plus 2 so if the question ever asked you what's the transformation made when I go from absolute value of X to absolute value of X plus 2 you just said oh yeah that's gonna oops put it in the wrong place so if you want to get to the thing you need to fix you press tab see how it says oh you want to put a third function and no I want to fix number two so you just hit the up arrow and you say okay that that plus two didn't belong there so I'm gonna change that plus two that plus two belongs on the outside plus two and it moves it up to I want a third graph how about that we go absolute value of X now this should come as no surprise minus three just moves it down three units oh god I put it in the middle again ah again to get to your functions and you want to fix them because that's what we're doing today we're showing you how to fix problems you type in wrong I typed it in wrong I just go over I hit the tab button I hit the up arrow and then I do minus three and then it goes down three Woo, man so let's say you want to get rid of one or let's say you don't want to see the black one and the red one anymore but you still want to see the blue one you could just instead of getting rid of them just uncheck that and then go up here and say okay I don't want to see those right now but I might want to come back to them later so I don't have to type them back in and I want to go to F4 F4 says the absolute value of X plus 5 now notice with plus 5 it's actually gonna move to the left so if your question was what's the transformation go made you say it's a translation to the left 5 so then press tab and I want to now do the absolute value of X minus 3 well if plus 5 went to the left what do you think minus 3 is gonna be that's right to the right 
All right, I don't want to see those ones anymore, so I'm going to get rid of those. I'll uncheck those. I might come back to them later. Notice the checkbox is green. The checkbox is magenta. tells you which one it goes to. It's always kind of nice. And let's do f of 6. f of 6 just says 5 of x. Now, go back. Here's the original blue function. Now, we're going to go 5 absolute value of x. And this should come as no surprise to you what's going to happen here. I'm just going to get really skinny, really steep. And it should come as no surprise to you then when I hit the tab button. And I do, by the way, to get a fraction on this calculator, you hit control division. If you forget that, you can always do this. You can always hit that button, the same button that has the absolute values. Click on that. It's the one above. And you can click right there. And now I can do one half. Now I'll go back into that button, absolute value of x. And it should come as no surprise that's going to be wider. It just is. If you don't like where these labels are at, you can always click and hold and drag them. It gets the, the hand, click and hold and drag button. Now, in order to click there, you have to use this D-pad. So you got to slide your finger around until you see the mouse pointer. Get over it, click and hold, and then slide. Don't try to slide right away. It doesn't work right away. All right, so that was seven. So I got... Three more left. Let's get rid of those. I don't want to see them anymore, so we'll get rid of this ugly brown color. That was kind of a pukey color. I wonder what color is next, because I've never done this many before. Eight. What happens when we put a negative in front? Negative absolute value of X. Oh, it just comes down. Oh, they recycled back to blue. That's weird. That's kind of bad. All right, so let's press tab. How about we do another one? Negative three. 3, absolute value of x. Oh, it's just going to be steeper, but still going down. So the negative is a reflection. All right, so now let's get rid of all these. I'm going to hit Doc B. Doc B gets rid of everything. It just clears out the entire scratch pad. If you want to know what B is, it says clear scratch pad. But you can just hit B. Gets rid of everything. We'll go into graph mode. Now we've got all this stuff going on. By now, you should be able to say what's going on. It's going to be reflection because it's negative. It's going to be wider because we got the half. Plus 4, or excuse me, minus 4 means we're moving to the right 4 and up 3. So negative control division, 1 half. That means it's going to come down. Absolute value of x minus 4. Minus 4 means it's moving to the right 4 and then plus 3. Let's see what we got. There it is. It moved to the right four. It moved up three. It's coming down, and it's wide. So that's how you use the absolute value. And if you ever get a question on transformations or translations, psh, that's an easy way to do it uh, right there on the graphing calculator. And I also went through how to use the tab feature to get to multiple graphs on one. Hopefully it was useful. All right? Let me know if you want to see anything else. Okay, guys? Catch you on the flip side. Goodbye.